Bentley of Houghton Farm. Uh, there's two items. Uh, review minor modification to uh, guardrail, a guardrail proposal. Uh, and the second is review affordable housing requirement. So if you guys want to come up maybe and yeah. talk a little bit about the, uh, the guardrail first, if you would. How you doing? Good, how are you? Yourself? Very well, how are you? Basically, what we're on the guard, we're just asking to change to uh, more of a standard detail with the metal and the wooden post. So I guess where where's the guardrail going? Where's the site? 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 That's what everybody wants. Where's the site? Where's the site? So almost right across the street from that new larger house there? I think that mm -hmm. okay. would be... There's one like right around there though, right? Yeah, there's oh, the the yeah. Got it, got it. Is it right? Right? Where's the trailhead to the conservation? Yeah. 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 There's the park where you Got it, okay. So the Reader's Digest version, yeah. the, the guardrail was what and will be what moving forward? Change of materials, change of design, change of size? Look, materials. The original guardrail, um, basically what they came up with was metal that was covered with wood, which is, <coughs> it's a detail, but okay. it's really kind of hard to come across, and the cost was astronomical. Uh -huh. So we wanted to just change it down to something more typical of what, what it's going to be and used in the town. Just kind of the corrugated design, shiny metal type of a deal. Just yeah, right there, yeah. But on your on your wooden uh, yeah. fence post, mm -hmm. looking at that. Okay. It's the same uh, guardrail that's out at Century Mill right now. If you went, if you were to go over that wetland crossing they did, okay. it would be the same type of. Okay. okay, and Harold, that uh, is Harold. Fred Hanway looked at this, he's fine. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Same size, same shape, it's just not clad with wood. Mm -hmm. Yes. You guys have any thoughts or questions? Happy to hear a motion seems pretty innocuous to me. Um, I'll make a motion to what do you say? Oh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Can the first motion be that it's a minor modification to the uh, to the subdivision? Um, okay. To yeah. Project. Do you want to? You say? Yeah. And to make a minor motion to approve a, to make a motion to approve a minor modification to, exactly. uh, yep. to the subdivision mm -hmm. and then. Yeah. Yeah. I'll make a motion to make a minor modification to the subdivision. subdivision. Uh, second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> I'll make a motion to approve the guardrail as specified on drawing number E401.10.0. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. The second piece of business relates to uh, affordable housing requirements of the project. And I'm going to recuse myself as I am an abutter to the lot in question. You guys want to sure. start off? Yeah. Um, I guess what we'd like to do is see if we can reach some sort of a, a move toward reaching some sort of accommodation in a more more rapid fashion because it's taken a while because of you know numerous faction, uh, factors. Um, originally it was going to go to the town and then there were some things that happened that made it a little bit more problematic. So then there was talk about perhaps just buying it back and that was I was agreeable to try and do that. Um, and then we got a couple of appraisals and then after that it became apparent that 
that there was uh, it was really a flat rate of two hundred thousand in the bylaw. So um, that became somewhat problematic uh, because of, of the cost differential. So what? Uh, and I talked to Erica the, the other day. What um, what I've what I've done is I've got a I've got a deed uh, that my attorney prepared uh, for lot 15, which was the the one to be donated to the housing authority, um, and that's fully executed. I guess what I what I'd like to say is that if this could be held in escrow, if we could still find a way that that um, I could uh, purchase the lot, uh, and how we're going to do that, I'm, I'm not really uh, I'm not really uh, quite sure whether the time frame for and I'm just struggling with with the, with the words, but my intent is to be as accommodating as possible. Um, and maybe there's there's a way that um, it could be could be donated, and then some fair market value could be established, and then I would be I would prepare to make another offer. And if there was mutual agreement on something of an appraisal or whatever, then then I would move forward to mm -hmm. sweet. Yeah. So. So it just so it's I, I'm just trying to figure which lot. It's it's on Golden Run Road. Okay. So it'll be lot 15. Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah, it's not on the. Okay, area. so it's not on the. Okay, so right. it's not on here. Okay. Yeah, it would be over. It would be basically right in here. Yeah. Okay. And I think it's a little under a couple of acres. We have a. a we have the uh, originally it was going to be given to the town. It was a five bedroom septic, which is still in play. Um, I actually had a plan for context that could have been used perhaps and we've been able to create two two uh, two affordable units and we've had the, the the appearance of a single family with the main house and then a wing right. and a wing which would have been garage and but, yeah, but think, it didn't work out. Yeah, I think I remember the history of that. Yeah. 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 So, you know, again I'm just I'm highly motivated to see if we can still end up with some sort of a donation. Uh, to the town. Yeah, so uh, based so on the wording of the inclusionary bylaw, it's not really just a lot, it's a unit. Yeah. Right? And that's why they came up with that number of 200,000. Yeah. Which really for a unit is actually probably even less than what a unit would be worth. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't really even know if we have much leeway. I mean, we can't. I mean, it's a bylaw, right? Not in terms of the amount, I believe. I think the amount is two hundred thousand, unless we, you know, decide to change the bylaw in the future, and then their subdivision approval runs out, and then the current zoning would apply to them. That would be one option. But that's we're talking two years from now. I mean, that's that's one avenue. Um, By two years, their subdivision approval ends in two thousand eighteen. But did you just say change the bylaw? Yeah, if we update the bylaw. Um, to some other number or you know if it's the fair market value and then once we have that revised bylaw in place their subdivision approval runs out then they're now um you know they would now have to meet the standards of current zoning then the bylaw could be changed before 2018. of course yeah, yeah if it was right. changed in the spring but their special permit would trump at that point you would need the special permit to go away to have the bylaw of the town then trump and then the other little piece of this is that if you actually read the condition, um, the donation of the law is tied to the issuance of building permits. So that's sort of what's forcing this to come about is that I, my hands are sort of tied in signing off on any building permits because we don't have this money in place or the law in place. So that's sort of why it's before the board tonight. I, I believe Peter's looking for a building permit. So. Yeah. And we have a we have a buyer for a uh, lot lot uh, lot six over there, uh, so we have a we have a signed PNS, but, but there's some time then to get a building permit. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to find a format that that satisfies you guys, but would still allow us to uh, get building permits there. Uh, there's four currently sold and occupied. There'd be a fifth around the middle of November. So there's a total of 15 lots of 14 minus the affordable. So there's still, you know, there's still quite a bit over there to be done. 
So are you saying that um, they can't get a building permit until this is settled because they're at some limit? Yeah, unless the board says, you know, tells me that continue to issue building permits. What, what's the exact it's wording of the... It's in your packet. Um, this is the last sentence of the condition. It says the applicant agrees to... Uh, no, excuse me. The lot must be deeded uh, no later than when the first building permit is issued. And there, this is this would like Bob said this would be an eight thirty six building permit that would be applying for. So mm -hmm. we're actually not in compliance at this point anyway. But I think a lot of it goes back to the original premise that didn't work, you know, which was the affordable, or the affordable to be built on the lot with habitat or. Right. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, you could also. It says you can, I don't know if you own other land in town, it says you can donate. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Any open space type land. Or, I don't know. It's probably. Doug? Um, so, Kevin and I are here as members of the Affordable Housing Trust and um, not a quorum, uh, so we can't speak as a board or anything, but. Um, we were talking about this earlier, and the reality is a piece of land is not very liquid for us as an affordable housing trust. Mm -hmm. you know, we can't turn around and sell it without a town meeting vote, and it's not going to be easy to sell it anyway. So land, you know, yeah. this bylaw certainly says you can, you can yeah. take land, but land is not the best thing. Okay. You know, money would be better. Um, and you know, I I helped write this bylaw, so I, you know, I I'm looking at it, and so I can you tell me where you came up with the two hundred thousand number? Yeah, you know, it was the number That's that was in. Question to ask. <laughs> Truthfully, it was a number in play at the time, and it was yeah. considered a low number. Well, that's what I'm saying because yeah, it's a unit. Was, it's a unit. Well, we, we were actually talking about it last year, of opening up the bylaw to make it fair market value, which would be higher than two hundred thousand for a unit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you, you there's a couple things. One is Having a flat number over a period of years kind of doesn't make any sense, you know, because values yeah. are going to change. Um, so, in retrospect, I wish this had said something different, and it could be certainly could be altered. You know, in a town meeting vote, you could change the wording to say something like a fair market value, you know, and set the criteria for how that was determined. And is it, you know, what wh what are you trying to get to? You know, in a when this law, the forty B law, was written. It wasn't really thinking about a town like Bolton where you're building single family homes. It was thinking about an apartment complex, a condo complex, and we could set aside you know twenty five percent of the units and have them be affordable. Mm -hmm. And they do literally cost, you know, the same as every other unit and they're much lower cost housing. So when you apply this to, you know, four, five, six, seven hundred thousand dollar homes, it's you know, it's it's kind of out of whack. I mean, the the value of a uh, you know a affordable home should be set at around what you know, hundred seventy five, hundred two hundred thousand. So I think that was where the two hundred thousand came from. Yep. Um, and it's gone down since then. You know, based on factors in the housing market. So the intent is a, a livable unit, not a piece of land. I know you have the appraisals for the land, a couple of different appraisals, but it's kind of not saying the same thing. I mean, well, the intent is to create housing. Yeah, right. So, exactly. you know, there's there's a lot of ways you can do it. And yeah. and we tried when we wrote this bylaw, we tried to come up with something that worked in Bolton. You know, we knew that people weren't building units of housing in Bolton for two hundred thousand dollars. You know, they, right. I can't. You can't. I mean, right, exactly. Unless somebody does an apartment complex or in a you know a, a big multi-unit complex, you can't build them for that price. So. It was to try and come up with a way that would create funds that would be put towards housing, um, and, and the number was somewhat arbitrary. And, and in, in retrospect, all these years later, I think that number, first of all, it doesn't make sense to have one number etched in stone as time goes forward. And second of all, um, you know, as you can see by Mr. Kiley, and we've got another one coming up right after this. That number's not working in the marketplace either. So, um, 
I don't have the answer for you, but I think you could alter this bylaw. You could make a change. You could get it to town meeting in May. I'd be happy to help if there was any desire to have us help. Certainly, we'd have some input on it. Um, I don't know how that could apply to Mr. Kiley going forward, or if it could. Right. And can't help now. <laughs> Unfortunately, changing the bylaw. Yeah. So, other than changing the bylaw, what are the options right now? Just so I can understand. Well, um, he could donate the lot. That's the other option. But the affordable housing trust, that's not what they would like to see happen. Mm -hmm. um, if he does donate the lot, like Doug was saying, that would require, we believe it re would require a town meeting vote. So that would kind of extend to the next town meeting. And then at that point, if Bob wanted to purchase the lot back from the town, that would require another town meeting. So it's just sort of this long, Process. What's the special um, permit for the project say? Donate it's, it says they donate the lot. It doesn't say anything about money in lieu, it just says donate the lot. So as a board, the board could vote to make a modification to the special permit to allow for cash in lieu. But the logic is the value of that cash in lieu would look back at the town's bylaw. Right, inclusionary housing. Which would have to be the two hundred thousand, right? Mm -hmm. If it's today, it's two hundred thousand. If later the bylaw is changed, comes before the planning board, modifies the special permit, looks at the town bylaw. So, town bylaw is a different figure. So that's so they you wouldn't actually have to hypothetically, um, if we were to change the bylaw, you wouldn't have to wait the full two years because as a board, if you change I think the that's bylaw, probably right. we could then say okay you can um, instead of doing a donation you could pay the you know money in lieu of but go back to the revised bylaw and whatever that said so maybe it's only a year i mean it shortens it up i, just, I think uh, i in, think in, i would in. ask town council that question okay. though, just okay. because of the zoning freeze aspect of the subdivision approval i I okay. don't. I, I I don't know what the answer is. Are, are we allowed to unfreeze yeah. parts, but not everything? Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, and then there's the the other part of this, which is in the meantime they're looking for building permits, which technically well, the lot is is donated. We're not supposed to be issuing any building permits. Although we have. Although we, we, <laughs> we, we can that, that we have more latitude on, but um, but it would mean the kind of you know, probably every time they want a building permit, they'd have to come in and. That's sort of yeah. no harm. No so, problem. what's your plan over the next year for building? You going to finish it or? Um, I'd love it seems to, like you're moving a lot pretty fast yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, he can sell and, probably. And like this, you've got so. a lot of rich friends coming to yeah. town. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it was one for so long, and all of a sudden there's four. You know so, what? In, in all candor, it, I'm a fellow that doesn't like to borrow a lot of money from banks. Mm -hmm. So I, I had uh, the Bolton project, I had one rotten, and I had one going through the boards. So I had so much money flowing out in all candor, the Bolton project took a back seat to the two and grot. So one of them is completely finished. The end, another one is, uh, it's a, a nine lot. There's only two lots left that we're framing now. So that's why you know, I'm concentrating and devoting more capital uh, to Bolton. So I'm hoping that, but I still think we'll be a couple more years, I mean, even at five a year, which is a pretty stiff pace. So you have five now? Building permits, you said. Um, we or have six. four. Well, we have four occupied. There'll be a fifth occupied by the middle of uh, November. But we've given you how many building permits? Five. Five, five. five total. Yes. Yeah. Right. But they're looking for number six. Right. Yeah. yeah I understand. So, yeah. Um, I mean, monetarily wise, I don't see how we get around the two hundred thousand. Right. I mean, looking at the bylaw and stuff. And even if we change the bylaw, I can't, like, they threw out a number of 170. If, I mean, that's like a regional, right. you know, if we go by some type of regional number, I, I can't imagine it'll change too much, but that's not until at least May. Unless he buy, buys back the lot, mm -hmm. you know, if you were to donate it and then buys it, back, buys it back for the fair market value, I mean, that's one option. It just would be over, you know, a period of time. Yeah. But that's a two year period of time. Yeah. I think, yeah. So, so if we went to fair market value is 170 and then maybe you get to your 135 if that's the number but that's or two years maybe it can get worked out in one town meeting vote i don't know if you Most say if you lay out the plan and say, this is what we want to do yeah maybe that's an option 
I don't know. Yeah, you could do the donate it first and then and come then back at a later article. Sell it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, any, anything, any, um, anything, any corporation that, that you're able to, to give and accommodate, um, you know, I really uh, appreciate it. And, you know, in all candor, in a perfect world, you know, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't even really be here talking. So, but on the building permits, I don't know how everybody on the board feels, but I think that we can say allow up to some number ten or something. I don't know. I mean, how, how many? You get to some number. Yeah. You yeah. would still have the keep, 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 keep some as leverage, but like say allow right. up to ten. Yeah. I mean, and, and I don't, I don't mind. You know, while this is all sorted out, I don't mind pledging another lot to you or something. Also, yeah. if that made you guys feel more comfortable. How about, what's the total? Well, you know, well, I mean holding. He's got a deed. You can hold escrow. Yeah, I've got, I've got a deed here for 15. Okay. That 15. you can hold an escrow. Oh, okay. And it's like full collateral. Escrow. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And if, if you talk and you feel like you would like something else, an additional lot. No, I, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, that would be fine. I think, I think we should allow up to some number and then keep some as leverage. Yeah. I mean, I think that's fair. Can, can I understand first, did the, the, the special permit say that they were just Giving a lock and not a built unit. I'm I'm confused, but I don't. Yeah, it's the yeah. donation of a lot, it's not, not an actual unit. And so, but that's not the bylaw talks about either. If it's a lot, it's land in excess of 115 percent. Right of construction, right? Or cash. So where does just the lot come in? That's just from the special permit, and that overrides what it's, is in the bylaw. I don't know that the bylaw is all that clear on that. Um, if we're talking about money in lieu of, it's the 200000 Regardless if, it, if it's originally we were thinking it was a unit or the lot, so the money in lieu of is the $200,000. Right, you're, you're right. It, so you look first at the special permit. The special permit on this project has language about the donation of a lot. Okay. If, the, if the applicant says, I don't want to give a lot, or if the town says, if a mutual agreement comes together and says, the well, lot is not the best path to take, money in lieu of can be another option. There's no language in this special permit for this project, like there is in our in our other one, mm -hmm. that talks about what that value would be. So then the reader refers back to the town's bylaw, which talks about 200. What's the intent of the number 200? So to answer that, I'm reading the bylaw right now, and I'm going back 10 years, 12 years, <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Um, it does say may offer, and the special permit granting authority may, in concert with the board of selectmen, may accept. So, just because he offers, you don't have to accept. But that's what was worked out in the special permit that was done for him. So the decision was that the land was, the land option was accepted at that time. Um, a donation of land, on or off site, that the SPGA determines are suitable for the construction of affordable housing units concurrently or in the future and the value of the land shall be equally graded to 115 percent of the construction or set aside of affordable units so the 200 i think at the time the value was 150. Mm -hmm. so 200 was more than 115 percent of 150. what the the value of a unit in a multi-unit um development not what is the cost to build a single family home in bolton because right. that number is never going to work right exactly that, that that's my recollection as to where and, and a lot of we were we were mimicking on a lot of other towns in the area that were doing this by a lot at the same time and everybody had 200,000 in it so there was a little bit of okay this is the number right now and I'm and I know we talked about well in the future we're gonna have to update that number right so in the bylaw it doesn't say that you can donate the lot in particular it says you can donate an amount of land up to 115 percent of the number it, you can but, but he's saying in the special land in the special permit, he's saying, well, he can donate the lot, and then he's saying he wants to buy it back at the fair market value. I think that's what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's saying in the special permit, it's saying, well, I can donate the lot. Mm -hmm. Which then, is what the permit then, says and what he's, you know, right. required to do is give you then, a piece of land. And then he's saying, he's for, then he's there. saying he wants to buy it back for 132000 I mean, There's no guarantee that he would get the, be able to buy the lot. It'd have to be made available to him. Oh, right. It'd have to go up for sale on the highest wow. bidder. Yeah, at that point, the town would try to sell it for the most it could get for it at yeah. the most opportune time. Yeah. So, you know, it's not that... It's not this backroom deal, yeah. Like, you give it to us and we'll sell it to you for this. Yeah, it'd have to go for sale. So you risk losing it. Right. That's what originally was going to happen. <laughs> 
Right. I mean, is that a path we could take, or you don't want to take that path? Well, I'm not going to. Uh, I think the agreement is that he gives you a piece of land, and that if that's where you're at and there's nowhere else to go, then that's what needs to be done. So that so. seems like the option. So, so it sounds like you could donate the land, and then maybe you can buy it back. The town will get it and put it up for sale or something. I mean, does, can the town do that? That's or well, we have to have a town meeting vote. Yeah. And yes. So to, to put it up for sale. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's why we were saying well, it might. Yeah. yeah. You, you could potentially trust. Still do it with two articles, right? I think You'd have to donate it. Oh no, you don't need it. No, no. We, we just okay. accept it. I, I, I think yeah, us and the select have to accept it. So that's that's a good question. So there's a couple of documents that are in your packet. So if you actually read the article that created the trust fund, it gave the trust fund quite a bit of flexibility in what they, how they you know what they could do and how they could you know use the money. Um, so then, um, in 2015, there was a citizen's petition where um, the purchase of land or the selling of land had to be more than just the board of select. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, did, did the, I just don't know if that got, that got passed. I don't know if I think they got bypassed. I don't think it passed, did it? If it got passed, I don't know if the attorney general upheld it. Uh, the because the, there's the, the this uh, this is targeted at one seventeen, 17 yeah. and it was and the attorney general came back pretty clearly on that whole thing basically that that right. the, that may be I thought the, it the, 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 the whole the whole the whole thing basically you know it was not something that you know the legislature pulled right. roads very clearly out of town meeting and so there's no way to pull that out and leave the rest of the proposal in place and, and really so you, you check with Don on that. So that's a really I guess a really important question that we need to get an answer um, for. Because if, yeah. if that doesn't apply then I think there's much more flexibility in what we can yeah. what we can do. Yeah. So that's the that, yeah so that's your two options. You donate the the lot and we we accept it and then put it up for sale and maybe or maybe not we put it up for sale and maybe and maybe not you buy it. Yeah. Or you give it seems like the two hundred thousand so that's your well, the, it looks like the special permit calls out specifically donating that lot. Period. Well, right, but if you want so to get, if you want, I would say if you want to get money in lieu of, I think yeah. we could fall back to the bylaw. Well, well, I think we need to check and see if we can modify. You could, you could modify that portion permit. to allow that. You would, that you would need to vote as a board. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Is that all? Okay. Yeah. Crazy thing. I'm spitballing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the law at all, but. It does. When the money goes in, does the entity go to Housing Authority? Housing, housing trust. trust Fund. Does the trust have the authority to write a check back? We give the two hundred, you write us back fifty seven five or whatever it is. That that real I mean, estate transactions that can make things <laughs> so we would have to make the land available to sale for anybody. But he, you're saying not the land that we keep you get two hundred thousand. What I'm saying is we keep the land. We, we write a check for two hundred. And then you get. And then you write us back a check for <laughs> the gentleman's agreement. Two hundred. <laughs> that, that's. Uh, I, can't see. I, can't see. I think that's. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that's likely. I, I, <laughs> I'm just, you know, sometimes in a real estate transaction, okay, this is what's going to be, but we'll take cash back. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just trying to make it easier. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't know if it's possible, but and that would. That would be a Seems vote like of the trust, which is the three also, selectmen and the two of us and one other gentleman. Also, the two hundred thousand is for a unit. Now you're just saying like I will, it would be like land, yeah. so it's not the way. So those are two options. So I don't know that there's any action tonight on that. However, what we can do, I, I think there's some research we need to do. Yeah. yeah. So I think what I would suggest is that we decide on how many building permits yep. will allow to be, so. be released. Yeah. Um, while we. Do go through and finish up our and do all of our due diligence, yeah. and then you know so they're not held up on their project, yeah. but then I think so. Not give away the entire farm, so to speak. Yeah, so I think maybe I think ten's a good number. I like ten. I thought yeah, that that's fine. Seemed yeah. reasonable yeah. to me. Yeah. And you guys should consider whether you want to take yes. a lot in escrow. Take that lot. You want to I'm, I'm gonna well, I mean, we effectively have the other other four yeah. locked up by not by by limiting building permits. I mean, I'm, I'm fine. I mean, they, yeah, because basically they wouldn't be allowed to. They can't build on. They, they have yeah. a building permit until this whole this lot donation. I think that's set. good enough. Whatever makes you most comfortable, Amber. Yeah. 
I think it's good enough. Yeah. I don't know about anybody else. I mean, I think it's good enough just to, you know, not allow past ten or whatever. Okay. I'll, I'll make a motion that we authorize uh, Meredith to issue up to an additional five building permits um, for Houghton Farm um, and to uh, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. I'll say that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. Well, it sure gets going. Well, yes. But it's like, you know, it's like, do, even if we wanted to do something, it's like we really can't. You know? There's no free will. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're just no we're constrained, we're constrained by all the rules. Right. So, you know, yeah. All of the agreements and everything. And if that's a yeah. zoning bylaw, could we go to the Zoning Board of Appeals just on that one issue? No, because that's it's initially actually. what I was hoping we could do on okay. this. And okay. town council weighed in and said, no, that would be sort of um, a change in um, the use, the use, a use variance. A uh, use yeah, use variance. Use variance. Use that. Okay, that's right. Without okay. revising the bylaw. No. And that's town meeting. No. Five more houses. <laughs> And, and hopefully you get this resolved long before that. So. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thanks for your time. Thanks. Good to see you. Okay. Oh, Patience, guys. Uh, a little bit past eight. Fred Coon and Independence in Central Borough Estates. Uh, and agenda item two: review affordable housing requirements and road construction contract. Come on up. Okay. 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 What do we got? I don't need. I wasn't at the last meeting, <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> was I? Yeah, no, was yeah. That, no, that's the one before that where I was talking about earlier. You're at that one. Tell me, ask me a question and I'll try to answer it. I think you agreed to, um, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you agreed to everything we were going to say. Yeah. I think we left it off. You were going to give us a lot number of your choice. We were going to engage our appraisal. We were going to show you the value. Did you, yeah. right, did you, did you engage the appraisal? No, we don't have a lot yet. No. Uh, can I ask one question? Yeah, you can can I ask any question. Did you talk to the affordable housing trust about how they wanted to appreciate it? They are here. They are here. here. Oh, hi. Well, a, a, a subset yeah. of two members. Okay. Yeah. Not a quorum. Uh, uh, <laughs> not a quorum. Uh, well, did you talk to them about what? Um, well, they had enough money in their account to cover the less expensive appraiser, correct? But you wanted to chime in with them. I think that's a question for you guys. <coughs> we could probably start there, I guess. And I was going to back up. Thanks. Uh, so this bylaw reads a little bit differently. This bylaw does it allow for, or I'm sorry, it's special, it's special, special permit. permit. Does this allow for a lot donation? It, uh, it's well, yes, it says lot donation, and then there's a clause in there about money in lieu. That okay, so there is a cho there is a choice in this one, mm -hmm. and it's based on their market value. The money in lieu is a little more forgiving. It's not based on a set dollar, or more forgiving perhaps in today's market. Um, not based on the set dollar amount, which is in our bylaw of 200, but it's based on a value pursuant to an appraisal, an appraisal ordered acceptable to both board and applicant. So that's kind of where we were. And that's just for a lot, not for. Can I just clarify one thing, please? Um, this was filed prior to the acceptance of the inclusionary zoning bylaw, so oh. they are not subject to that bylaw. Got it. Right. So this was an agreement in the, um, you know. Subdivision approval in their specific a specific agreement, um, part of the, the the subdivision approval. So so all you're bound by is the wording of the of this agreement. special permit. Okay, right. got it. Um, so yeah, the agreement is appraised. It doesn't talk about who pays the appraisal. Uh, it, it specifically says it says um, an appraisal firm mutually acceptable to the applicant and the town. Mm -hmm. um, what's up? 
I don't think it said. I don't think that's what it says. I'm going to read it. Okay. Just for clarification. Uh, these lots must be located in three non-contiguous locations on the property. On mutual agreement between the developer and the planning board, the developer may donate the fair market value of the undeveloped lot following the same schedule in lieu of the land. The appraised value will be Am I reading it too fast? <coughs> Sorry. Yeah. The appraised value will be determined by an independent appraisal done by an appraiser accept acceptable to both parties based on the standards set forth in um, the, the foster special permit where it talks about it's the um, the value minus the room improvement. Right. So the appraisal acceptable to both parties. Right. So it does say that. Yes. Um, so my thought was to have the town engage. We couldn't come to agreement as to who to use, a mutual agreement as to who to use for appraisal. Not terribly uncommon, I don't think. Um, my suggestion was to have the town engage its appraisal and pay the cost, have the applicant engage its appraisal of its choice, they pay the cost, take the two values, average them together, the applicant chooses to do money in lieu of instead of donation of the lot, there's your value. So the question one is, a couple of questions, are you okay with liquidity? I think I know the answer, but for the benefit of Andy who wasn't here before, you can talk about that maybe a little bit. And would the trust be amenable to funding the cost of the appraisal? We've got three quotes, three competent USPAP NAI approved appraisers. 500 bucks, they kind of vary a little bit. 500 bucks, three grand, and $3,500. And we haven't voted on this specifically, but my thought is I'd be fine with any of those three. Interested to hear whether you'd be okay uh, recommending that the trust pay for that cost, and then do you want that or do you want a, a piece of land if, if you had a, a choice? Kevin? <laughs> And I'll add one thing. I, 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 I want to read the language again. I think the choice is the applicants. Yeah. I don't think the town really has much say about that. But I mean, land or money? Or the lot number, I think is what you're referring to. Say that again? The lot, the actual lot. Land or money. Yeah. That lot or money. But the lot to be appraised. Mutual yes, yes, yes. Between the developer and the planning board, the developer may donate the fair market value. I believe we did vote on that. Couple. Yeah, I think that's part of the agreement. That, that at that point in time, the planning board agreed to it. Got it. So, I, I do, I do believe that it's either or. I mean, you know, we want we want to get the most we can get. So, um, funds are certainly more liquid and more able to be actionable in a shorter period of time. So that's fine. Uh, but if we were going to get a fund that was quite a bit less than what, you know, we really could get if we sold the land, um, then that wouldn't be fine. And, you know, that's the whole point of the, the fair appraisal is to determine what it's really worth. Um, I think having two, uh, you know, appraisers, is, that seems like a fair way to do it. I was very, you know, surprised at the range of pricing and it seemed like the two higher ones were very high. Mm. Do you know any reason why those? There were quotes dollars. that the town came up with. Oh. So it, it was research that Eric range of the pricing of the appraisers. Yeah. No, we didn't. They didn't do it. There, there yeah. are names. Yeah. yeah. So my first investigation was, my director to Erica was, if we've done this in the recent past and we've used an appraiser and it turned out competent, Let's just use that name, and the answer was no. We we really haven't. Um, so she checked with colleagues in neighboring towns as to have you done this before? Uh, have you used local appraisers? Can you recommend any names? We got three names that way. We had conversations. We've got engagement letters from all three. Uh, they're doing the same analysis as far as I can. As, uh, and this is for a lot or three lot. It's, it's very funny. It's an appraisal for a lot but under the premise that the lot is not improved with infrastructure. 
So it's a, it's a, it's a raw lot value. So presumably, presumably, an appraiser is looking at a accessible lot, a lot not within a subdivision, and then deducting the cost from that, uh, the cost to develop roadway. Or maybe they're looking at comparable sales within a subdivision of lots that don't have infrastructure. Quite that simple and coming up with that value. And this is for one lot at this, this point. This is for time, one lot. Because that's at the 20th permit, the other two come at the 40th or 60th. Yeah. So yep. I would assume that this appraisal would be for this one lot only. And that's correct. Right. Okay. Make yep. sure you get that and wording clear. Yep. Because yep. a year from now or two years from now, the market could be lower, the market could be right. higher. Yep. yep. So I'm <clears throat> having trouble understanding why the housing trust would pay for that. Um, There's no language in the special permit as to who would pay the cost. Right. I think it's probably a little bit of an oversight, but there's always oversights. I mean, just the planning board budget didn't have enough to cover it. So the planning board budget has enough money for the $500 appraisal. Yeah. Yeah. If, for some appraiser, if for some reason we think that the 3000 or 3500 we don't. Is there any reason? Do we have any information that makes one more valuable than the other, or that just three different people? They all know the premise they, yeah, the, of the assignment. So why would we not take the lower one? I would recommend taking the lower one, yeah, especially if we're paying the cost. Just in terms of recommendations, the um, appraiser that char charges 3000 he was highly recommended yeah, by several of the surrounding towns. And they pay, that's did you ask if they pay three thousand for it? <laughs> 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just, just seems like a lot. If we have the funds to do the five hundred, I'm, I'm fine with our paying for it. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to push for a more valuable appraiser because we think we're going to get a better appraisal. I, I don't have any perspective on that. I would assume that. That's one of my questions. I would assume they're all good. Okay. Okay. So I think then it's in your court to give us a lot of your choosing. We'll engage our appraisal and then it's up to you guys. If you want to come in, look at that value and opt to pay that value, that's fine. If you come in and say that's not the right number and you want to engage one of your own, I think we voted last time, but I'm certainly personally in, in favor if you want to do that, to engage your own at that time. We averaged the two and put it together. We also, when Go ahead. That last thing you said, I mean, that's not a, an agreed upon procedure. What what last thing? Averaging. Appraisal. You don't agree to it? No. Okay. No, I said that last time. Okay. So okay. you just want us to engage one and give you the value? Well, I think that what the, um, I mean, hopefully, we're not good. This won't turn into a long drawn out thing, but that's okay. certainly if you can, you know, if we disagreed with your appraiser's value, and and I had an appraisal done, or we'll, you know, um, and you disagreed with that value, then I think what the document says is that an agreed upon appraiser. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know. Hopefully we won't maybe get to this that point, but um, I uh, I guess uh, there, you could also go the route of trying to agree upon an appraiser. Um, but maybe this will be uh, maybe this is a little simpler. We could try it for five hundred bucks. You know, okay. not the end of the world. So do you not agree with any of the appraisers that we chose out of the three? Um, I think that I want to see what they come back with because I, it, it's not so much who does it. Yeah, it's what but if I disagree with the number, um, that, I mean, that's, that's matter who does If it. somebody comes back with a $400,000 value, it doesn't really matter who does it. You, you want the chance to take a look at that. I yeah, can't, I can't because I mean, if they did, I, I would dispute it and say, okay, I'm going to have to hire it. I mean, I guess the ultimately, you know, you could end up having. Uh, you know, I hate the word, you know, I mean, you could end up having a uh, court decide what is the number. Who knows? I don't want to know that. I just want to have a simple process. Um, so, I think, um, 
you know. We've got our direction then. They, so I mean, other than that, you like <clears throat> coming up with a um, uh, an agreed upon appraiser that we're bound to. Um, maybe we can come to a reason, an agreement without getting locked, trying to, you know, go that other route because that can get complicated. Then let's put in your court to get us a lot. We'll yeah, engage our appraiser. Down, try to get and we'll take it from there. Okay. Paying for it. We are planning board will pay for it. We can afford that. I I'd just like to put this out. I'm yep. Trying to make sense of this, looking over these things. Uh, the um, the desire to uh, give money instead of the lot is it the option of the developer? It seems that the developer should pay for the appraisal. It it's not set. I, I mean, but you can do what you want, obviously. Just trying to let you know, have a little logic to that. <coughs> Thank you. I, agree I, don't, I don't think Andy's going to agree upon any of our appraisers to pay for them. I think that's what he's saying. I don't know. I think that's where we are. I mean, the point of, of us engaging our appraiser and you engaging your own appraiser was to come to some, and averaging them, was to come to some sort of agreement on that. Otherwise, we're in this. We don't necessarily trust who you're going to choose, you don't My. trust who we're going to choose. So. Right, and that's why I don't want to agree to an average. I mean, you you know, if, if you wanted to agree to an average, I could probably come, you know, I mean, I don't think it's a good system. So it doesn't mean, it doesn't necessarily ensure accuracy, sure. reasonableness, mm -hmm. or averaging. And you haven't had, it just guarantees we're all unhappy with it, which is success. Uh, excuse me? It just guarantees we're all unhappy with the number, so. <laughs> well. Clearly, if you think something's really wrong with the appraisal, and I've seen appraisals that are way off for some yeah. reason or another, you want to have the opportunity to challenge it. And that means just coming back and talking and figuring something out, right? Well, yeah, I mean, hopefully we'll reach an agreement. Mm -hmm. The other option is to get a couple of appraisals. I mean, if the end result is that... That was my you're logic. Not, you're going to spend money to get an appraisal, and it's not going to be... That was my logic, but I think know. if the town engages a couple of appraisals, well, I don't know why you would. I, I would think, yeah, you, know, yeah. It, you know, your original idea of you doing one and him doing one, I mean, that seems reasonable. At least you have two to go by and then negotiate with two. I don't disagree with you. Just, uh, I mean, I appraising. mean, there's always an option. Your appraisal could come in higher than our appraisal. I mean, there, there's right. I mean, pricing is a uh, co very complicated business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, for $500, you're not going to get a, maybe a, a, a comprehensive appraisal um, but there is a lot to take into consideration it's, it's a in, a, in appraisals yep. it's more than what's the lot worth what, what could you sell it for it's more than that what more is it <laughs> um, well there's like you know time value of money what could you sell it for well, what is it worth but when can you sell it Okay. The road's not in. I mean, um, so it could be a discount value involved because you have to wait. Yep. Um, the, you know, it's like when people get, you know, if you get, you know, I went through a divorce and I owned real estate and my wife had real estate from her family. Uh, but, you know, like if you're, if you own real estate and you don't control it because you have a partner who owns let's say there are three partners and it's a third, a third, a third, if you don't control it, you don't take the market value as if all partners agreed to a sale. This appraisal will. This will be as a fee simple appraisal. No, I know, but I'm just saying that uh, there are appraisers. It's a very sophisticated business, you know. Uh, so, in your court, let us know what the law is and we can engage that appraisal. I mean, hopefully that's why I'm saying we hopefully we'll just come to an agreement. Um, do you want to give us a little background on the road completion timeline and maybe uh, council's opinion? So well, do, we, do we want to close up this and, and the appraiser? We do need, do we need to vote on that? We voted on it last time. Okay. There's no difference. Okay. I mean, we're in the okay. same exact spot as we were last time. Just, make, just making sure. Yeah, okay. just making sure that the affordable housing trust was sort of on the same page. Yeah. Okay. I'll try to get you guys a lot. 
What's it? I'll try and get you a lot number. Thank you. Because at this point, this is starting to hold the permits, isn't it? Uh, certificates of occupancy. Sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it works differently. This project holds okay. when it starts. This is the conveyor. Okay. Did you um, to take a vote that if we um, established an account with mm -hmm. 140? Yep. We did. We yeah. also. Okay. Yeah, they did. What did we say specifically? If 140 is pledged, we'll run up to. You had a limit. 20. The 25th, inclusive of the 25th occupancy permit. I don't remember. That. So it could be. I don't remember. I don't remember that being a number. I, don't know. I think it was the 25th. Oh, it was a number. I don't know. It was a number. Yeah. Yeah. I think 20, 20, 25th rings a bell. Yeah. 25 probably sounds right. Yeah. Completion. Okay. Oh, completion permits, yes. Uh, so in their covenant, um, there's a condition that says, upon final completion of the construction of ways and installation of municipal services as specified herein, which shall occur on or before June 30, 2016, the board shall release this covenant by an appropriate instrument duly executed and recorded. Failure to complete construction and installation of the municipal services within within the time specified herein or by such later date as may, as may be specified by a vote by the board with a written concurrence of the applicant may result in rescission of the approval of the plan. So essentially, um, that date has come and gone and the board in concurrence with the applicant need to come up with a new date as to when the completion of roads need to be done. Um, in 2014, Andy did come before the board and get an extension of the subdivision approval. Um, I had town council weigh in and essentially their determination was that extension was for the zoning freeze only and not for the road completion. That is two different things. But the covenant um, is what we would go by for the road completion. What's the penalty? Uh, well, the penalty is that the, uh, it could be, uh, if the, the approval could be um, there's a uh, rescission of the, of the approval. <coughs> what's your question? What happens if we don't vote to extend the date? What's the yeah. consequence? Yeah, what's the consequence? Oh. Well, well, it's more than us voting. It, it, it's it's agreement with, with the applicant. So um, if, if he doesn't agree with what we come up with, then you know, it's, it's basically rescission of the plan. It's the final uh, consequence. I mean, I assume that date was derived based on when they thought they were going to be done with the roads. So, what do you think you're going to be done with the roads now? Um, we uh, moving along pretty much as quickly as you can. Uh, it, the development was approved with four phases, and uh, which is very common when you have a large development uh, or you know reasonably good sized development. Uh, as this one is, uh, it's the largest one in, I think the both of us in. Certainly in other parts of the country, they're much larger. Anyway, so, but it's a good sized development, it's a big piece of uh, land. Uh, so it was approved in phases, and we have uh, put in the, the subdivision improvements, um, basically, very to, to a high level of completion in two phases already. Um, and we've done, uh, you know, the water supply, which services the entire development. So there are two phases where um, the road still needs to be constructed. Um, phase one, which abuts the Century Mill Road, and then in the middle of the development which is phase three. So phase one is where the road comes in, the construction entries off of Century Mill Road. Yeah. And the other phase is in between where you have developed okay. what we just talked about. Okay. Yeah. So I think they were numbered one and two. I'm just sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure. could have been ABC. Yeah. We had the choice to start in phase one or phase two because well, that's what the approval said, but okay. also because <coughs> these two phases, <coughs> this is phase one, 63. and this is phase two, mm -hmm. these have the access to existing public streets. Okay. Uh, but the topography in this section is uh, fairly, you know, this is all ledge. Tough. Yep. Yep. Um, and the road, like coming in here, the, the land has to be lowered where the road is approximately 35 
geography um, <clears throat> because Century Hill Road, you know, is at an existing height. And the land, uh, you know, right at the road, we have a, maybe 20 feet or so that is at the same height of the road, but then it climbs fairly steeply. And this, is, this area up in here is about 35 feet higher than this. What, so, what phases were you saying are not complete yet? One and three. One so three. phase one, three? One, three, yeah. Uh, and then this is, then this, this section is all, I mean, if you drive up there, we've uh, done some work um, so that we can figure out what we're going to have to blast. And pretty much it's all edge from here all the way down. So with that, I mean, what do you, what's your schedule you're anticipating? Um, well, we've, we're getting, uh, we're close to uh, really uh, bring, the, the next step is to bring it, sort of getting ready for the blasters to come in over here. And this road, um, and to build out that road, uh, keep in mind, you know, you, you can build the road, but you really can't complete it 100% until the houses are also built. I mean, you could, but then the tractors ride on the finished pavement and would ruin it. So building the road and the time to complete are almost a little bit two different things. You could have a road here that you can drive on, like we have over here, all up through here. Binder course. Yeah, just don't put the top corner. Mm -hmm. Right. Top goes right. Up and just yeah. do the binder. What's so, the covenant deal with? It's just road completion. It's not. Gonna, it's not. It, it doesn't. I don't think street acceptance. Yeah, it doesn't talk about street acceptance. It just says. Yeah, actually, it does. The covenant um, does specify because the covenant is what is sort of the document that um, creates the need for a bond. And so the bond has a breakdown of line items, and one of the line items to complete that you have to bond is Top Coat Road. So it's it. I mean, uh, when you when you know when you do a subdivision approval, you basically get all your per the covenant is sort of the last thing that says, okay, if you're you're this is approved, but you're agreeing, you're not going to sell individual lots to people until the roads in. It's, that's the per, that's the purpose of a covenant is to you can sell in bulk but you can't sell individually so the so the intent of the road completion date is to make sure it's done before the project's done or just to make sure it's done to make sure it's done before all the lots are sold and you have no more ability or the bond completely right. released so you have no more ability to make sure that the right. infrastructure gets done yeah that's the whole point yeah. that it get done and, and the fact that you know, this development is going to take a lot longer than anybody probably thought it would, yeah. is just the reality of the you know, market. So there's no value to the town to not have him finish. You right. want him to finish. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you're giving him incentives. So we just want to make sure that an extended date is sooner than the completion date of the project. Right. You're always going to hold either a bond or lots or whatever so that, that there's something that you have. So maybe we had a year or two years or something. Well, what, what? I mean, again, the purpose of a the purpose of a covenant is just to make my, Thank you, I mean, I'm not, many, I'm, not, I'm not an attorney, but I've certainly been advised. The purpose of a covenant, it's an agreement that says, ah, uh, the developer agrees that, and that, that, okay, this is approved, but you're not going to sell until you get a release from us that we agree to the roads are in. Because it's a protection for people that are buying. Well, it's a protection for the town. I mean, and ultimately, right, the town, the town will, yeah. you know, the, almost always, it has been in the past, that the, when a development is finished, the town is, the developer turns the road over to the town, so now the town owns the road and is going to maintain right. it. And they want to be sure it's done, it's done right, and it's you know good for the next yep. 10 years or whatever. But the, yeah, the, I mean, the subdivision approval requires, the, the, the document is what requires you to build it per plan, and the plans are have to be done according to your subdivision by a lot. It doesn't sound like this date has anything to do with the bond number, though, right? I mean, no. No, but you just yeah, need to yeah. keep the date current yeah, so that right. you're not, a, he's not in default. And there's yeah, yeah. Anything so just, just, just want to add it. Right now, we're just, just adding so it. It's pretty common to extend yeah. the date. 
So I think it's I think it's easy. We don't want to not push the data. No, for sure. Self serving. I was just trying to understand the the how far it doesn't. Frank, I mean, it doesn't. Uh, it's counterproductive to force me to build the entire road. Oh no, I don't. The reason yeah, why is disagree. my cost would be so high because I can't. I don't have customers to build the houses. Yeah. So what ends up happening is I have to go borrow the money to yeah. build the road, and then I have high interest payments. No, I. You don't have to business, yeah. so that's why we it's have a big project to push it. Push it three years. Then. We talked about this before. My logic was push it out a year. Oh, yeah. I think you wanted to keep a shorter leash on it. Not a leash, but a year is. Too short, and it will hurt my ability to get financing. You're not going to. I, I'm not assuming you're going to be done by the date that we push it out. It's a it's a checkpoint. No, I know, but as a your banker, right? Yep. Okay. If I go to my banker and they say, "Well, your covenant expires in a year, and it's not going to be done," it it. I, as a banker, answer. I would have a problem if it was expired. I wouldn't have a problem if it was pushed out a year. It's a performance covenant. You, right. want, to, you want to look it's, at it every so often. It, it, well, it, it's not. It's not a. Uh, I mean, you have the right to rescind the approval. And what do you want it to be? I think it should just be a, like. I mean, when we got the uh, dot, it got it approved. I think it was must maybe it was seven years. But I mean, I mean it's. By the time we build, let's like build the roads, build all the houses, so that we can then put the top coat on, it's going to be probably at least another four years. So cut it half. I mean, I cut it. Yeah, it was some good. I mean, it's up to you guys. I think I think it's going out pretty far. I'd go out a year. This is my I, I can't I'm complete it in a year if I started right now. Yeah. I, I, understand. I mean, the language is written so that you can change the date. Yeah. No, I know, but you, yeah. it. it it has ramifications to the ability to go get loans and financing. I mean, would you? And our banker doesn't seem to be indicating that. So, well, <laughs> use common sense. Uh, well, well, I think he's wrong. I think if uh, an approval, uh, if if a uh, approval requires the road to be built within 12 months, and it's impossible to build the road in 12 months, would a bank lend on that? No. I just because closed on a 400-unit multifamily property with no building permits. I mean, I had a approval for the project, right. but the building permits will come in due course. You don't need building permits. I will look at permits like this, this and is saying you have come right to course. take away the value of the land in 12 months. It's, it's, it's not reasonable. You're not taking away the value of the land. I think you're just taking away the approval of the plan. Well, well, yeah. well, 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 well it just means yeah. you need to come in and update us. And yeah. we treat I, just extend it right. I think it's a smart, commonsensical way for the town to look at the progress of the project and be able to see a checkpoint and then be able to say, okay, this is where we are. After a year, we finished one phase or halfway through one phase. I mean, so that would be my recommendation. My opinion is change. last time we, what, we, we bumped short. it two years last time from 14 to 16. Is that what we did? No, we've never bumped it. No, this is never uh, been. Well, for the, the zoning. It's taken uh, for the zoning, yes. uh, four years to do. Yeah. Yeah. I think so they have take years of work. They're going to be there for like I, five. I, 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 I would say two years. So why are you putting a year when it's? I would say two years. I mean, I think it's, two years. It's, it's it's four years worth of work. I mean, in um, no matter what you do, two years is probably fair. So in the meantime, there's no mail delivery, no no school bus in there, right? There's school bus. Did they just leave? Yeah, we don't have mail. Nor normally they won't put. No mail. It's not a. You know, what, you're right. They normally don't. Uh, and then you're not right. Sure how you residents, that one, when residents come in and say, mm -hmm. they, they did on, on other projects and in yeah. the school. It's kind of a new phenomenon no. in the last but, uh, yeah. four or five years. Yeah. Yeah. These yeah. projects taking a lot longer and people demanding services. Yeah, well, you know, rightly so. Which, which is why to push on it a little bit. And I don't know if there's a mechanism to approve, you know, once a couple, you know, one of their roads or a couple of the side roads get finished off and you know, basically you know approve those but that's a separate uh, for this I'd, I'd be I'd say two years is I mean, I'd be happier with a year but I'm, I'm okay with two years Michael two years okay Peter I don't have a problem with two years it's more just to force it to force it come back and checkpoint I have one other point I could add it probably is without your approval four years because of the state permit extension act okay 
that you might want to check the town council that every permit in the state was extended by four years from the state park because we did check with council right didn't you just not on that point though that's a yeah i can check in on that clarify for me i don't get it there was no we had this horrible depression yeah the economic depression the state passed a part they did a statewide it was it was actually it's called the permit extension act Okay. And they extended the any permit that over. you had for it, basically any is any a, approval that you a, had is this for a, four years. Yeah, I guess that's but, 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 but this can I just I, this, this is just a this. performance guarantee, so I, I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe but it's any approval. Maybe it's I don't know. And it, it was extremely. It, it was a certain. If I remember correctly, there was a certain time frame of when you got that permit. Um, we, so obviously we, we follow it. Okay, I didn't know. Yeah, okay. So that would have automatically permit, extended though? the zoning freeze then, so why, why did we have to approve that? No, it's suspended. You don't really need to, you, you know, but it, it's, it's a belt and suspenders thing. So, um, Still, do, you feel, do, you want, do you feel like you should research that? Um, well, if that's the, well, I mean, again, I guess, it's probably in Andy's best interest that I do that because yeah. if it extends another I mean, four I, years, then we're it talking to me earlier tonight, and so I <coughs> just went on one. Well, you know, about it. we should make the motion. It's very very motion. Okay. Yes. Well, then that's there, and yeah. if that trumps yeah. it, and that's you've fine. got another four years, then okay. we can clarify can, can I just clarify that, though? I mean, the four years was for the extension of a dated permit. This is not the dated to permit. No, right. that, that's true. But the so, covenant, yeah, so yeah, that's a good point. Right. The it, covenant date, yeah. and do you remember the date <coughs> when the covenant was signed? Was it 2010? When you, right before you started uh, construction? There were two of them. There was an original. And then one, the revised. And, well, yeah, and then, well, there was the original one for 71 lots. And then when we had added in the seven it's lots, seven, yeah. um, it was revised just for that, I think, just the number. Um, but both fell within the the time period that you needed to be in for the State Extension Act. So I guess that's the other so question. The, the state state extension that date, right? yes, date. No, it would apply to the permit date. The permit date. Not, this, this is not road completion date. This is something, I think yeah. I agree with you. I think this, this is something is, different. Yeah. I'll it, look into it, but. I'm almost positive. Yeah. It applies to your permit okay. date, the date that right. you got the permit that is extended. Yeah. And that's not what yeah. I, 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 I mean, I yeah. could be wrong, but that's, yeah. that's not what I'm saying. The purpose of it was because of the economic. Yeah, to extend diversity. everything at least for. So you don't have to go back. Yeah. 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 Because of the motion to extend we the road completion so date two right. years to yeah. June 30th, 2018. Second. Yeah. All those in favor signify by saying aye. I, I, think I, 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 I was going to say, I want to amend it just to cover ourselves that if the Permanent Extension Act applies, that it will be the date specified that that. Well, we can come back. Or we can come back to yeah. it. And, and, okay, that's right. Now, if you right. take it, it would be like a confusing move. Uh, we can come back to it. Just not take a vote and keep no, it. No, 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 I'm saying no, just not what we did. No, no. And then if, you know, next meeting, if to make a motion again. Make a motion to <laughs> extend the road completion date from June 30th, 2016, two years until June 30th, 2018, uh, with the exception that the uh, four year state uh, extension period does not apply to this. All those in favor say aye. by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Can you read me back the vote? We can adjust it. We have to in the future. What? I said we can. If, if, Did you if say it's not correct, the state? Were you concluding that if, if it does not apply, if to it this, does, not yeah, apply, yes, yes. If it does not apply. You've got two years. Okay. If it does apply, then we would. Yes, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but you almost said we're saying it. Yeah. Didn't apply. Yes, yeah, so they pretty much you open it up to that superseding. Okay. Okay. Any advice? I'm loud. Well, how we're doing over there? Any problem? It's beautiful. Super. I gotta start blasting soon. One. Is blasting happening soon or what? Well, we're uncovering uh, because the rocks are so big on in Walton yeah. that sometimes what you think is lead, I mean, you pull out a rock as big as a car. So we're taking the loam off. Um, Find out if the drill holes are actually in boulders or if they're in 
Um, so we can both see that done. Um, and then, yeah, the next step is to, uh, I mean, it's... Are you going to notice my neighbors? I already, I already agreed, told you we'd be going to Yeah, they're going to be doing the, 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 the sandwich board, so I'll get notified. Phase one. Yeah. Phase one. Yeah. And then phase three will be the last piece. Yeah. Was phase one originally supposed to be your first phase, or is it just it how it's numbered here? Either phase... It will the, two the numbers do not know. No, they, they've never yeah, so we, we, it, I think the approval actually says in the, we could start in either one or two uh, because they both had access to an existing mm -hmm. street. I think that's Yeah. I think I it gave you flexibility. Yeah. yeah. Um, the only thing that um, I would like to mention is that we still don't have any money for Fred Hamway so, um, um, to do the construction oversight. So I actually, I think I sent you an email saying that I had to tell Fred Hamway to stop all oversight until we have that money. We'll send in, uh, we'll send in. Yeah. Okay. through a little tight period. We've yeah. Well, it's been tight period general. for a long time. Some periods get tighter than others. Mm -hmm. When do you plan on starting that second wet oh there wet crossing? crossing. Um, we had uh, plans to start it. Um, well, I shouldn't say we had planned to start it. We uh, we had started it because we did not have. We, we asked the Conservation Commission to extend our Conservation Commission uh, approvals, the orders of condition, and we went in a year in advance and they didn't extend. We went in nine months, six months, and three months in advance of when they were coming up, and they didn't extend. Um, so this goes back a few years ago. So it's for this crossing or the other crossing? For the, this one? This one. Okay. Uh, no, it was for the, yeah, for, for this one. For this one. Yeah, because this one was already... That's the turnaround that you see today. Yeah, yeah. I always think it's further out, but it's yeah. not. It's, it's a lot of distance. Um, yeah. Actually, the crossing is over here. This is the turnaround. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the crossing. Um, so, uh, I got really afraid that the permit, conservation commission permits would expire. So, we started the work and intended to try to get it completed. Um, but, um, Commission, um, and that's when we were working seven days a week, long hours, because we were deathly afraid that the permits were going to expire. So um, and that ended up leading to us losing our rights to work on Saturday and Sunday, just for background. But then anyway, um, the answer to your question is we went to start it, but then the, these lots are owned um, by uh, three investors, and one of them did not want to uh, build the road yet. So. so what time of year you have to work on that crossing? You can't do it in the spring. You can't do it in the basically in the wet time of year. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This this crossing you can stand on either side. It's not as big. No. It, it's no. literally you could straddle it, okay. and um, it. It's a. Uh, yeah, you can see the uh, It's stretch. completely dry, except really in the spring, mm -hmm. when the when the snow melts. So, Concom has allowed us to go over it. Huh. It's solid. It's it's a solid ledge. Well, yeah. so, um. I, I mean, there's an area which where we where the road is going right in here. Crap. This is solid. It's solid ledge. Across it. There's you know, wetlands up here and wetland below it. But this is all. We've extended ledge. your order of conditions. Can that so the only um, time the water flows can you extend it um, is is yeah when it, when it's really um, when this sort of fills up to a certain level then it runs downhill. But it, you know. Do you think you'll get that portion of it done within the three years? From that we got our uh, order of conditions extended. Yeah. I mean, it's just something you might. Want to check. I, I didn't think you could extend in order conditions more than once without having to refile. So no, I'm not familiar with that. I mean, you have three years, but it just you when you mentioned it could take four years or something like that. You probably want to make, make sure that portion of it was done within your extended time for your order conditions. Yeah, it's just a big project. That's yes. you know it is. It's it's a you know it's a big piece of land. And when did you start? Before the downturn? 
I believe I, what happened, and the story behind this was I originally um, saw on MLS that there was about 20 acres here. Yep. And it had frontage. And because I felt there was a downturn coming, I wanted to do smaller projects. So it, it was just, I, I was interested in it just for the frontage lots. Okay. And I thought I could do four lots because of the back land and there was a lot of frontage. So I bought that piece of land to build four houses. And then I looked at the assessor's map and uh, noticed there was a hundred. I abutted a person, an individual who owned a hundred acres, which was Gigi Ponazzoli. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and so if I had built the four houses here, he had one access. It would have impacted him a lot because he would have lost him the only other way out that I could see uh, that he had. So I spoke to him and said, you know, do you, would, do you want to consider selling? And he actually said, yeah, I actually would like to sell it. And so we came to an agreement. Um, and then once he was uh, on board, there was Mr. Larkin from Larkin Lumber, whose family owned, I believe, the land for a long, long time, and it was landlocked. Yeah. So they had logging trail access yeah, okay. for lumber. That's their business. And then Bob Davis, the same. And uh, oh, Jesus, it's a who's who of all that, right? Isn't that the, I, I never so, knew who owned it. Yeah, and uh, it is. It is. It is. Yeah. And, oh, and Dave Lampson. Really? Yep, yeah, his family. All the, all They're all over here. Yeah. 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 So that's it was sort of a an accident, you know. So we put four four units and eighty units later. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a, I mean, at this point, it's sort of a labor of love, I guess. I mean, I love the land. It's a beautiful piece of land. It's it's very nice it rolls. Yeah, it's so, really nice the, you know, individually, the house lot's sort of a level, but when you drive through, you don't oh, yeah. feel like you're in a, on a level yeah. Yeah. place. So it's, I think it's really pretty. And, uh, I'm living there, right? What's that? I am. Yeah, my house is uh, ninety percent done, but it's been ninety percent done for a while. Great. Yeah, it's. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. This all right. It says email heard a lot more. That's fine. This is great. That's mine. Yes. Thank you very much. Have a nice night. Have a nice night, everybody. Thank you. I can't help myself, Erica, but probably send you maybe like one or two bits. But I thought that letter was pretty cool. The country covered one. Oh, yeah, that's the last item on the agenda. But it's really just because I can't help myself. Please, that's my idea. Is it the convenient typo? Yeah. Oh, is there a typo? No. Mr. Gore, I did not see that. It's a non convenient convenience store. It's a convenience. Oh, yeah. Good touch. Yeah. Touche. Touche. I'll give you that. So what are, you, what are yours? I'll be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a set of holes. That's what you're red <laughs> Convenience. <laughs> so I just had a question on this, and I apologize because I, you guys have probably already gone over it um, during one of these when I wasn't here. But the figure that was submitted that kind of showed the area that they were going to do uh, to use uh, for the Dunkin' Donuts, um, I guess seemed much larger than the original donut and coffee shop. Well, the coffee and donuts were sort of dispersed through the store, so it's sort of like they're oh, taking okay. it and putting it all in one section. Okay, I didn't. I misunderstood that. Yeah, they're like the, the fresh donuts, and they have an area that has some prepackaged donuts. Yeah. You know the okay, you know, okay, and, and See, things like that. And I, didn't, you know, okay. I, I was thinking it was just all in yeah. one that corner, and then I was like, wow, they're just dub almost doubling it. But I didn't, wasn't mm -hmm. taking into consideration other areas. 
it, it'll numbers. be roughly the same. Um, the numbers they gave us, you know, it's the existing is about 450. So they want five. They're saying the proposed will be about 475. Four so. Not that it really matters, though, no. does it? I mean, the no. way the buy it. I think it's one of the half the lot. So yeah. <laughs> I think in my mind it's one of the items that lets a reader know whether or not this is ancillary. Or no. If the thing is thirty two hundred square feet, she's got an existing counter that's four hundred and it's going up yeah. to three thousand, yeah. then it's a Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. Right? And I think the other I don't think it's worthwhile to know. I, I think no, it's the, I think the square footage is our important. No, I think it is. It, it's also important because it's a pre existing non conforming use. Yes. So if they were um, doing a crazy extension or alteration of what they was existing, the thing, then they'd no, they have to go to ZBA and get a special permit for that. So that's why okay. in this instance okay. it is important. Oh. And if they sold it okay. to okay. the case? Is there ever an instance? Sorry, go ahead. No, that's a good question. What if that asset sold? Yeah. And what happened? What do you mean? If, they, if they sold the building to someone else, to, I mean, do they then have to Runs get with the owner and that's oh, it runs with the land. Yeah. Yeah, we did this yeah. before. It, yeah, it runs with the owner, so you would need a new, a real special permit for that project. Yeah, the pre-existing runs pre with the owner. You can say in your special permit that this permit runs with the land and not the so owner. So that's why if you don't say anything, mm -hmm. it runs with. That's the why Frank needed we a new special permit with the softbox. Yeah. Yeah. Frank was a sort of a unique situation where most of his uses had been abandoned for more than two years. So uh -huh. that that grandfathering had gone away uh -huh. and it was cleaner if we just and he agreed to yeah. just do the same thing. He was just being smart. Yeah. yeah. I mean you had one existing pizza. It if you sick. just kept that but yeah. never added anything else, you could kind of get away with it. Yeah. But it's let, let's make it clean. So um, so this is a letter from us that we're sending to the um, board of selectmen. No, no it's sorry, just just to the owner. Just, oh, just to the owner. Just to let her know that this memorialization was into the yeah. file. That okay. effectively, it, Erica sent at least to me, maybe to everybody, a paper trail once, kind of a synopsis of this is what this project has been through. This is the origin of everything. And while there was no special permit, it's a pretty cool roadmap. It kind of they wanted to do this. We talked about it at the selectmen meeting. They wanted to do this. We talked about it here. It kind of gives a good roadmap. This is a nice, clean. Look, they're changing the use yeah. from this primary use to this primary use and this recognized uh, mm -hmm. ancillary, ancillary slash incidental use. I think it, I think it's cool to show any reader of this file to show anybody uh, any future applicant who wants to do a similar project. Yeah. Wh what does the fast food definition really mean? What can yeah. it be? It sets precedent. Yeah. I think it's smart to do. Would this go on the planning site as well or no? The planning. Our planning board website. website. Oh, the website. Yeah. Um, it's a document on there. I don't have anything right now. I'm yeah. covered. I, I certainly can add. Just the only reason why I say that is because of all like, <laughs> you know, the rumors and stuff on social media. Like, oh, no, this is going to trigger all these other things. But we don't have. But I'm just saying. Public public record, right. But uh, what I'm just saying is this letter kind of talks about it being an accessory and not a primary use. It, it, might, it actually might be helpful, especially if someone's going yeah. down the road and sees a duck and donut sign go up and they're like, why? why? No, when did that get permitted? Right. Yeah. Yeah. They might be able to go to the website and just look, you know, take a look. So. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, know. no, it's not. No, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think there will, will definitely be questions that will come up. Yeah, because people. There have been. It's just a way to document our decision publicly. These guys are selling that there's a machine. Duck and Duck going in. Are there uh, thoughts on amending that? Bylaw? Bylaw? Uh, yeah, I don't want to. To say what? Amending what bylaw? I think we need, to clean, up, we need to clean up the whole fast food bylaw, the whole definition, and we should add fast food as accessory in the table of uses and with an SP. Then you're probably not wrong. Yeah. No, I think you're right. I think it needs to be clarified. Yeah. I mean, there was so much. The, you yeah. know, of us yeah. going back and forth. How many meetings did we talk about it? You right. Know? So and we had yeah, the fast food box. Yeah. No, yeah. I know. I, I, I want. I, I want to clean it up and allow fast food as accessory. Make it cleaner. It, it's it's he not. wants to clean up the language which we had council yeah. clarify for yeah. us. Yeah. Which a, a reader is not going to clarify on their own very simply. Yeah. 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 And, and but, then, not, but not make changes. And then also, well, so Dave and I were confused when we were initially looking at it because it, we're looking at the table of uses 
and it's not in there. So, it, so there's yeah, a the definition of the word the, fast food. I think fast food being in the table of use. There's, I, there's an accessory it, it's category, it, exactly, and it's not in that accessory category. And, and in the accessory yeah, category, it should be right. fast food, yeah. and we should have special, special permit. permit. No, yeah. I think yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah, I mean, I think any of the ancillary or accessory uses should be should be should be listed. Should be the, yeah. 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 And then that would take away all the questions. Yeah, and it, um. Uh, Michelle had the question whether for in the village overlay whether they want to have a broader definition to allow maybe some fast know, some some fast food type yeah. and takeout type restaurants as especially where you're as trying a, to a, yeah as a primary use and, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so we need to you know look at how all of that plays you know yeah. because that's that would be one of the main draws to doing a village, you know, a, mm -hmm. a, a, a village overlay. It's another carrot project yeah. because clearly nobody Maybe it would help. clearly nobody's taking it up because yeah. right. it's just you know it's there's there's not enough benefit to there's it. There's not enough benefit. To but it. maybe this would. Yeah. 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 I think that yeah. your baby. <laughs> it's not mine. <laughs> what about the percentage? Did we ever come to a that fifty thing? Yeah. Did we ever figure out oh, why that, that number fine. was? Kind of, but 50. why? Why was it that number to begin with? I mean, someone came up with it. I think the right? intent is 50% of the st approved square footage yeah. of the property. No, no. I don't think because yeah. that's that 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 that's a lot. I mean, but well, still, that's, that's, yeah. we can talk about it. But yeah, definitely, that whole of the lot needs to be taken out. Yeah, yeah because everything qualifies, right? Yeah. By default, it, it does. Yeah. yeah. No, but, but yeah, like, I, I, I think like if you had some agricultural uses, it it, well, it, would, it would come into that play. That was what I thought. Like, if you, you know, if you're doing, you know, yeah, if you have an orchard, and then you wanted to have a, you know, donuts you know, being or like well, no, cider well, more, or something. Well, more just Kimball well, you're, you're, well, you're approved. Yeah. Well, kind of right. Uh, well, more, more. I think it's it's sort of like you're approved for, you know, agriculture, and you want to put in a Christmas tree, um, uh, grove. You know, the cut your own mm -hmm. grove that that may be considered ancillary. So you'd want to, you know, else, to, yeah, to yeah. some, you know, or you want to put in a, a used car lot on, on your on your farm, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but yeah, yeah. 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 some extremes. You know, <laughs> I don't. You know, but but I mean, I, yeah. I think it's yeah. that sort of you know things that take a large, you know, outdoor yeah. square footage is kind of where that, you know. In kind of from the, our theoretical agricultural background yeah. in town, it's kind of where that comes from. So should clarify. But, 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 but I think, but I think clarifying it to be, you know, yeah. inside outside, whatever. But. Yeah. I mean, I can't actually envision there being too many more opportunities for this to even take place, really. Because like, what other can you like hold your breath with that? <laughs> well, well, I'm saying okay, so can like the liquor store can add a Dunkin' Donuts or something, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but. Uh, or the, 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 the McDonald's and Old Marchers? <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but, like, for instance, for instance well, no, I mean, let me, let yeah. me just, I mean, so, so, I mean, it, it, and this is you know, slightly more serious, you know, if, if the gas station goes in, yeah, there's, um, uh, up in, um, up in Sanford, Maine, there's a gas station with a convenience store and a McDonald's, right, you know, is kind of attached in the same yeah. building. Yeah. So well, if that McDonald's was 49% of the, the, you know, the building, the building size, size then that's yeah. not ancillary to. Except for we know. have the no drive through, so they probably wouldn't come in at all. Doesn't matter. Uh, for a gas station. No, for a gas station, you, you know, you're, you fill up, you know, fill up your tank with gas and you go and fill yourself up no, with no, gas. No, no, but I thought change like so, that would come with, with a no drive through. No, but I mean, I mean, there, there's plenty of McDonald's yeah. around. They have one on the bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, some of those have drive throughs Some do, but not, some yeah. but not all. Yeah. Do. But, but like you know, Acton doesn't have drive throughs and there's a you know, there's McDonald's there. There's other towns around. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there definitely was some concerns. So clearly, like 470 Main Street, for instance, how they have the two units. I mean, you know, I try to tell people that you know that each unit is a primary use, so you can't have like a Dunkin' Donuts there. That's so, right. but but as like. You know, like the uh, gas station convenience store. This, I, mean, I don't really see a problem with it being hidden inside. You know, whether you have a coffee counter or a Dunkin' Donuts. You know, right, right. So I the, think the, you're question, right. the question That's was, you know, where are the other alternative, you know, other places that may come up? Yeah, and you know, it'd be something like that would be. A have we heard anything? Of, are they look, looking to submit or for the gas station global. people? 
I actually received an email from their attorney today because I reached out to them because I was curious to see where they were at. And essentially, they did some more testing out there. They um, ended, ended up hitting a lot more bedrock than they anticipated. So they had to kind of go back to the drawing board. And um, he said, you know, we'll kind of keep you posted when we gain a little more momentum. But he said their intention is still to do something in Bolton, and they're trying to work with the, the owner of the property. So just, I mean, but all they care about is the front three acres, right? Yeah, I think they were... Yeah, that's what, yeah, I mean, time. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, So just in that small area, they can so it's a big a lot, lot goes up, yeah, so right. Just tell them to go talk to Andy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When, do we, when do we start talking about bylaws? Um, Usually soon. Yeah. <laughs> November? Maybe. November? It should be any time. Because we, we have public hearing like February, right? Yeah, so yeah. probably, you know, maybe I'll try and put a list together for the next meeting and you guys can yeah. figure out what mm -hmm. you want to advance for this year. So I won't be in the next meeting. <laughs> Hopefully my, my products are kind of hit and miss. And, um, are they local or are you traveling? No, I'm in Winthrop. I'm okay. doing, actually working for a town in Winthrop. I'm doing a boardwalk in the Belle Isle Marsh. Oh, so cool. I have um, every single environmental permit you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the Conco is just the first one, but um, it's a multi-process. Require like a pre application, then you go. We're, we submitted today, so I'll go. Who's so, your client? So it's like a path. So it's like a hiking trail through a marsh? No, no. Like marsh no, no. Is um, so the whole, the, the Bell, there's only four salt marshes in the state of Mass, and the Belle Isle Marsh in Winthrop is the only urban one because it's mm -hmm. around. So it's a big open marsh, and so we're going to do a boardwalk, like a raised boardwalk, like you know, elevation 12, your marsh is at elevation 5. So it'll be raised along there, and there's actually a DCR parcel that we're going that they got a lease agreement. DCR. Um, the oh, Department of Conservation Recreation, it's a state-owned property, yeah, okay. basically. That the town got an agreement to um, lease it, and that um, if they can, they'll pay to build it, and they'll maintain it. If DCR will let us um, build on it, so we're going to do like an overlook mm -hmm. tower, oh, cool. um, some paths, and um, so it's part of an overall walking. Area. Yes, they have this walk went through. Initiative. Where is Winthrop? Winthrop is North east, North. You, like east near East Bossy. Like every single picture I have, seventy five percent of them have airplanes in them because <laughs> right next to the airport. Like you just hear the plane. I'm like, oh my goodness. Um, so it's uh, it's a nice drive. Let me tell you, I haven't had two. Oh, that's hard. Oh, yeah. Is that where Deer Island is? No, Deer Island. It's further off um, of Boston. So yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool yeah it is cool. I have a project in Revere, and you can't get there from here. Yeah. It's just, it's yeah. <laughs> well, in Winthrop, it's the Winthrop is three quarters um, has the ocean around it, oh, so right. it has one little peninsula that you can kind of drive into, but three quarters that has the ocean. Yeah, that's so right. Yeah. It's yeah. like that's you don't want to get stuck in there <laughs> if there's stuff going on. Is that um, Hull? Is Hull right there? A Hull is no. a little bit south. south. Yeah, oh, that's south, south of city. there, near more near Situate. Okay. So, but, uh, so cities here is like all the way around. There. Yeah. But they unfortunately have concom hearings Wednesday. Luckily, they're only meeting once a month, so I'll miss <laughs> next meeting. I'll be here meeting after that, and then I m probably will miss the first November no meeting. Worries. So, but if there's anything um, that our associate knows, so. yes, yes, yeah. excellent, thank yeah. you. To be honest with you, I don't see anything at this point. I don't have anything coming up for our next meeting in terms of business, so I don't know if you guys want to cancel that meeting. I mean, play by ear, but. Meeting is it's October, October 12th. 12th. October 12th. Okay, I won't be there either. Okay. We can still play it by ear. Yeah, but I guess my question is, if we have no business, do you still want to get together and talk about potential bylaw amendments, or just kind of push that to the next meeting? I would push it. Okay. Yeah, no, that's fine pushing it. The one thing, I, think about one thing I did want to talk about, which we brought up on email, was um, do, before we... Do we need a motion or anything on, on the donkey, on the block? I would suggest, oh. I, I'd want to say, and not make any changes now, suggest do what we've done sometimes, individually emailing you. Yeah, I'm not sure. going to have a lot, I promise. But it just shoot you like red lines. You can thing. revise the entire okay. thing. No, I, I, thought, I really <laughs> think it's Honestly, good. Yeah, no, it's yeah, a good answer. Yep. No, I was just going to say, um, talking about 401 Main Street at all. If we want to talk to, should we talk about that at all or no? Let's put it on the agenda for next. Yeah, time. I'm just not prepared to talk about it, but yeah. which one? Not, not tonight. Not tonight. Oh, yeah, no, maybe so. the next agenda yeah, would be. Yeah. Would be I want to get that more back. That's the cultivate counseling. No, it's the old Ernest Farm. Ernest Farm. Oh, oh, right across the street from. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's what's? 
I want to get more up there. I want to learn more. I think we should talk. We should probably talk about that. I reached out to town council. I would prefer to get town councils okay. weigh in and then bring it to the board. And that way, I, I feel like I'll have all the information for you to review. Should I give an overlay now or no? It's totally, it's yeah. to you and the board. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just so, so it used to be a farm, Ernest Farms. It's in the residential zone. It used to be Nancy Skinner's house. It was oh, a beautiful, oh, beautiful oh, property. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful property. So they ran the business yeah. right to the right of it. She ended up selling it, and she now lives, I don't know exactly which house, on Burnham Road, that little dead end. Okay. Her family members mm -hmm. live down there. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a, it, it's like, it's, it's the family's corner of the town. Kind of. but so, so anyway, this, this company, uh, this therapist from Acton, they have, it's kind of a cool therapy uh, where they use like animals to help treat like therapy people. Type of stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, they're also adding to their, so they're moving in. They're also adding to the business. It's kind of like they call John, what is it? Uh, Sawyer Mill. John Sawyer Mill is a sober house. Okay. So the person, the owner isn't going to live there. The house that's there is going to become a sober house with, I think, up to five people, five residents with um, monitored staff, mm -hmm. 24 hours. Then the barn they're outfitting to become kind of like the therapy part, which I just mentioned. Um, so, so really, in residential, you can have an in-home business, which is you live there, and your yep. in-home business, the your in-home business is ancillary to yeah. living there, kind of mm -hmm. like we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. yep. um, or it could be a farm, and this, this is, is this is very different than anything that's mm -hmm. been here. So, I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying we should understand it. Yeah. Oh, and another wrinkle is that the Soba House is actually. Um, there's a federal zoning act that says you can't discriminate against people with disabilities. Correct. So there's really nothing locally we can do or say about that. I think the question is the whole other part of the business where there'll be staff. And is it is it a residential? Yeah, but is that, is that type of use um, automatically like exempt? Well, so, so that's the question. So that's the is question. is, so is so that so part so of the so business so. exempt under the sober house? That's a, that's a, yeah. It's a separate premises. It was a separate building. Um, right now, they they need to have like offices, so they added trailers, which I think um, Mike had some issue with. Well, they right? brought yeah. it and to the site and started unloading it yeah. that building permit. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> so amongst all this, there's neighbors and residents, um, Burnham Road people, who those trails are right up against their road, mm -hmm. are very concerned about. Yeah, yeah. What is it, trails behind the house lead up to? I said the trailers. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I thought you said trails. Okay, sorry. No, there's trails like, like right on yeah, yeah, their yeah. road. Yeah. Um, so in my EDC capacity, I said that I would try to set up a forum where um, the owner can talk to the residents and say, you know, what type of, because it sounds fairly benign. It's a lot of like teenagers and stuff like that, you know, from what he was saying. But still, I think the town should understand yeah. how it fits into Well, especially if there will be questions, I'm sure there will be questions that will come up and we would want to be able to answer them. Well, right. So even at that forum, I asked Erica if she could come um, to explain any of those questions because I'm sure they're going to come yeah. up. And I'm yeah. sure people are going to be like, well, this is this or this and should this be allowed or this that be allowed? Yeah. Um, and so like she said, she wants to understand it fully and talk to town council. Um, I think they were at Board of Health last night and got the approval. Or yeah, in terms of water and septic, I mean, they're... Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because yeah. Even, though it's, even though it's congregate living, they still qualify as a single family dwelling, so... Yeah, okay, okay. Um, yeah, because it would just be part of the better, yeah. So I think, I mean, like I said, residential is either an in-home business or a farm, and this is, like, completely different, and there's the whole federal part of it, so I just think, as a planning board, we should understand what's going on and, you know, be able to... Because people are going to have questions, and uh, you know, I don't know if there's any like public. There's no public hearing really tied to in-home businesses. Home occupation? No, and that's something that the board. Well, the question is: Is this a home occupation? If well, that's the question. Owner. The owner doesn't really live there. Yeah. You know, so there's a lot of questions, and I think we should understand it. And are they coming to you for permits or anything yet, yeah. or is it no? Well, it's just they. The, obviously, they're now coming to us for the building permit. Yeah. Um, no, they, they've been uh, in contact with the town to determine, you know, do they need any permits for the use, you know, um, 
and that's sort of where we're at now is um, the building inspector Mike Savage out. Mm -hmm. Uh, he and I are working together to determine if, you know, where does this use fall in our schedule of permitted uses or is it an exempt use? And that's essentially at this point, that's what we believe is that this, the entire thing. The entire exempt, thing? The entire thing is an exempt use. All part of that federal yes. act? It's uh, the State Zoning Act and then it's also. But the if it wasn't a act. sober house, if it was just a therapy, I would say no. Then. And I have documented. I would prefer to talk about it at the next meeting. I have yeah, a bunch yeah. of I don't want to push it. Yeah. Um, and I'm also going to be, um, so uh, we did get a copy of their application um, to the Department of Mental Health because they, yeah. they have to be licensed. Yeah. Yeah. We have that application. I'm actually going to contact that department as well just to, I want to make sure that I'm crossing all to you. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, yeah. in general, I think that it's, it sounds like a really good business and like it's an innovative type of therapy you know so oh, yeah, it, it sounds yeah, right yeah. it sounds really cool and good I just want you know the residents around it are gonna have questions and I think we and should concerns, be like, yeah. Yeah. Should questions be. and There's concerns been, this has been very contentious it's you know I've gotten lots of phone yeah. calls and and even the owner told me that he's gotten a lot of people calling yeah. him up so concerns so I, I do think the town needs to weigh in on it and make sure everything's above board yeah no, that makes sense. Well, I think it kind of popped up and nobody, yeah, you know, right. Nobody knew it was coming, so I think it, that that they bought it, they own it. It's not like a pending sale. No, they bought it. Got it. Mm -hmm. And they were from Acton. They originated. They had the, they had the same Acton, but they never. Yeah. It's it's funny. Uh, they were in Acton, but I don't know that. Uh, my understanding is that they never actually. They haven't gotten their license yet. Like they were looking at getting their license in Acton, but. They decided Bolton would be a more preferable place, so then they moved here, and then they're going to move forward with their license licensing application here. So I don't, I don't quite know. Well, especially with the interactive portion, mm -hmm. it might be easier, you know, with the whole animals. Yeah, and right. stuff yeah. Stuff. I mean, because in general, I'm I'm very pro business, and I'm like the chairman of the EDC, so clearly I am. But I also want to protect the residents, the residents that are right, yeah, that are right there. And that's, and, and that's part of our, part of, yeah. as the planning board is, if it's a residential zone, we need to protect the residents in that zone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I also reached out to the town planner in um, Act and, and unfortunately, <laughs> he's like, call state counseling? He's like, I never heard of it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <That's> so big. <laughs> We're the shop. <laughs> okay. All right. Motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you.